Hello, this is Chuck from Mavericks Arcade, and today we're going to be talking about the joystick shown here. Now, you may be thinking, wait, this is a servo stick. You already did a video on that. However, this is actually the U360 joystick, that analog joystick that I was speaking about. However, we've installed the servo motor and the restrictor plate underneath. So this video is going to show you how to take the U360 joystick and install the servo motor. Now I did check on the website and I found information on how to install the restrictor plate, but nothing specifically on the servo motor. So that's why we're going to go ahead and show you how to do it here. So in the picture here you see I have the U360 joystick. I have the normal restrictor plates, which has a circular, cir uh, circular plate or a four or eight way plate. Um, the servo motor and that white restrictor plate, which is used with the servo motor. Um, and then a couple of screws, springs, and so forth. So then, obviously, this is a picture of just the U360. Now, I've written a little arrow on to show which way is up. This just helps when you're going to mount the joystick or any time the joystick is disconnected, trying to figure out what the orientation is for it. So then the um, then this is showing under the underside of the joystick as it comes, just the U360 joystick by itself. So the very first step you need to do is you need to um, unscrew the circuit board off the bottom of the U360 joystick. This part's easy. The screws are very easily reachable. Just go ahead and unscrew those with a flat head. Then the next part's tricky because these little br black brackets, you have to twist them or use a screwdriver at an angle to get them to unscrew. But go ahead and unscrew all four of those. And once you've got that removed, the magnet on it, you just kind of have to grab the magnet and pull it straight off. It doesn't screw in or anything like that. It's just magnetically held there. You just kind of got to give it a pull and pop that off. As you can see here, I'm just taking it off. So the next step is to install the restrictor plate. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to take that plate and you're going to lay it on there so that the part that comes up like this is facing away from the joystick. That way it can get over that little black ridge. Now you can see on my joystick here exactly what I'm talking about. You can see how the white part goes down into that black area and then the white part goes up and over right here so that, that way it still has clearance. So make sure to do that. And then uh, the next step is to put the little four pegs in as shown here. The thinner end of that peg needs to be what's in the joystick. Now do not tie this down too tight. If you do, then the white disc won't be able to rotate back and forth. So once you've got all the pegs in there, make sure that you can still move that white piece so that the servo will be able to move it without much difficulty. This is what it looks like with all the four pegs sitting in there. And then the next step is to put the circuit board on there um, as shown here. And as you can see, it's nice and all the circuits are inside and it's just a flat part of the board that's exposed. If you put this on backwards, what will happen is when your joystick is moving, it will track directions in the opposite way. Um, because of on that, that little microchip looking thing is a uh, sensor to detect the position of the magnet. So make sure to have that in that orientation so that the magnet can be detected correctly. Um, the next step is if you've decide if you've um, put the little white pieces on there to tighten down the board, and then if you just uh, detect that it's too tight for that white disc to turn again, just use a set of pliers to gently twist loose those little posts. So again, that the white disc can freely move back and forth. And as you see here, this is what it should look like when it's assembled. And again, just a couple of pictures. Now at this point, you've got basically what will happen is your joystick should be in this condition now. So what you're going to do is you're going to line that little peg up on the motor here. And you're going to go ahead and attach this white part. Now, as I said, this is just like the servo stick at this point. So please refer to the uh, servo stick movie uh, to continue on the instructions on how to install the USB uh, controller and how to wire up a second joystick. And lastly, how to use the configuration software to actually move this motor. But again, all this is doing 
is this little motor will move this white disc back and forth. And what that does is it restricts it from a four-way to an eight-way configuration. Now, if you were installing just the restrictor plates, the only difference is instead of installing this white disc right here that rotates back and forth, you would install either the circular, the four-way, or the eight-way uh, restrictor plate. Otherwise, the instruction, instructions are pretty similar. Now, one thing to note, when you do have this configured, you'll still want to use the software um, for the joystick to digitally set the restrictor plates as far as the directions on here. Um, the reason why is because while this does help give it the feel of a four or an eight way joystick, when it's in four way mode, it does still detect diagonal directions. So you'll want to use the software in addition to the servo motor to make it truly lock down four way or eight way modes. Um, I promise the next couple of videos I'll have some software configurations for you. We are looking in the future videos to have a video on the Ultimark IPAC 3, uh, IPAC IO controller. We are also going to have a video dedicated to LED Blinky. And then one of the subscribers has asked us about um, issues that they're having with bezels in MAME. So we're going to do an entire video on how to make your own bezels in MAME and some issues you may run across possibly with some gun games. So we're going to check that out for that user and verify if we have that issue on our arcade and go from there. If you have any questions, please comment below let me know. And obviously, please subscribe to the channel. I definitely want to continue getting subscribers. And I appreciate everyone that has subscribed thus far. Thanks again for watching. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click like below and leave a comment. If you have questions or suggestions, please email mavericksarcade at gmail.com. And if you're into consoles, classic gaming, or home arcades, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks again for watching.